Well, for a Ukrainian perspective on those developments, we're now joined by Yuri Suk, an advisor to Ukraine's defense minister, and he joins us now from the capital, Kiev. Sir, thank you for your time. Now, a short time ago, the U.S. has announced an additional $725 million in military aid to Ukraine. The package consists mainly of restocking rounds of ammunition for weapons, but no anti-aircraft systems. Are you disappointed? Um, hello, Leila. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, we, every time when we receive uh, military support from our allies and from the U.S. in particular, we are grateful for what we receive. And if you look at actually at the composition of that package, it contains a lot of uh, different types of weaponry which the Ukrainian army uh, needs on the front lines today. You know, 200 uh, Humvees, um, lots of thousands of rounds of ammunition. These are all very important for the intensive warfare that uh, is going on right now in certain parts of the front lines. Now, at the same time, air defense systems are, of course, a priority for Ukraine in the light of the recent missile strikes and in the light of the fact that these missile strikes continue. They may be less intensive than they have been on October 10th and 11th, but, of course, they remain a priority. And as our Minister of Defense, Alexei Reznikov, said yesterday, uh, Ukraine is expecting to receive the first two NASAMS air defense systems from the U.S. in the near future. We have already received um, air defense system RST from uh, Germany. Uh, but, of course, you know, more needs to be done in order to be able to properly close Ukrainian skies uh, and to keep our cities safe from the missiles. Mm -hmm. Now, you already alluded to uh, the attacks uh, from Monday, uh, where we witnessed a significant escalation in the war when Russia launched a, a wave of airstrikes in major cities across uh, Ukraine. How is Ukraine dealing with the aftermath of these attacks, specifically the targeting of a critical infrastructure like power, like water, like heat? What is the scale of the damage and how are people coping in those affected areas? When these missile strikes occurred, of course, uh, we were uh, worried that it would uh, create a lot of problems for Ukraine's uh, electricity and power grids. Uh, and indeed, during the first um, you know, hours and days uh, after the strikes, um, some of the even major cities in Ukraine and some of the regions have been experiencing power outages. But the Ukrainian government uh, and the Ukrainian emergency services uh, have done spectacularly well. They've uh, restored, uh, for the most part, all of the uh, damages. Of course, there are certain works that needs, uh, need to be done, but uh, for the time being, we've done well, and uh, it just shows that Ukraine, uh, you know, is able to rebuild itself very fast. What can you tell us, sir, about the situation in Kherson? Uh, we understand that residents there are being told by uh, the Russia-appointed governor to evacuate because of advancing Ukrainian troops. The situation in Kherson is developing um, in accordance with the plans of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. And as you know, uh, from the beginning of September, pretty much, there was uh, a, a large counteroffensive in different parts of the front lines, not just Kherson. It began in Kharkiv, uh, where the counteroffensive was uh, particularly successful. And uh, in Kherson, since the beginning of October, Ukrainian army regained control of uh, uh, over 75 uh, villages, and this amounts to about 1,200 square kilometers, maybe even more now. Uh, it's a very dynamic situation, of course, uh, but uh, it's, it's part of our military objective, and our military objective is to liberate all Ukrainian lands from the aggressor, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, this war needs to be stopped, because everywhere we, uh, where we liberate our cities, we are finding new uh, new evidences of uh, war crimes, new evidences of atrocities. So uh, the sooner we put an end to this, the better. Now, concerns, as you know, over the possible use of nuclear weapons by Russia remain very high. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says there is no evidence that Russia is moving uh, any uh, nuclear warheads. Are you reassured by that? Uh, we are reassured by the position of our international allies, who said very firmly that uh, in case Russia will consider using tactical nuclear weapons, the response of the international community will be immediate and catastrophic for Russia. So it's not us uh, uh, who should be afraid. It's Russia who should be afraid, and should, they should not even think about using these weapons.
Yurisak, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.